I'll uh, call to order the December meeting of the Bloomington Board of Park Commissioners. And Kim, if you could start us with the roll call, please. Yes, Kathleen Mills. Here. Les Coyne. Here. Israel Herrera. Here. And Ellen Rodkey. Here. Okay. All right, thank you. So first up, we of course always have the consent calendar, which includes the minutes, the claims submitted from the last meeting, the non-reverting budget items, budget amendments, sorry, business report, <clears throat> and a few items of surplus to declare. And thanks to Kim, we've had the, for a couple of days to look over. So if we have a motion to approve that, please. Yes, I'll move to approve it. Okay. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Motion carried. Um, okay, sorry, I'm just checking. There's a comment in the chat about a later item here. Okay, so we'll move into the public hearings and appearances. Um, the public comment period here is reserved for comment that is not related to any of the agenda items. So you'll have a chance to, we have 11 agenda items. You can speak on any one of those at that time. But if you have, if there's a member of the public who has a, an unrelated item, they would like to add to the public comment. Now's the time to do that. Do we have anyone there on email or Zoom or Facebook Live who would like to make a public comment? We have a hand raised. Okay. Kathleen. Yes. Alex Goodland. And I'm going to unmute Alex. Give me just a minute, Alex. And and just to just to be clear, um, this is, you know, it's awkward doing it on Zoom. Not everyone has the agenda in front of them. We are taking up under the other business, the issue of the special use policy and tents in the park. So if that is something that anyone would like to speak about, that's not in this public comment period, that would be coming up in just a few minutes then. And Alex is unmuted if he would like to make a comment about okay. something that is not on the agenda item. Yes, I would. And I will take my time and I would just like to I guess talk about um, that I think it's important that, you know, to respect the process and respect the rules, not just for yourselves, but um, for these people here to speak. I think that we're like, I, I have to give it to right now, the Bloomington Homeless Coalition for making it possible to, for people who generally don't speak in these meetings to be able to speak. And, and I think it's, it's such a great thing to happen. And I just want to say that that's great and something that that's good as, as, as we look at these items. And uh, I know that in, in the past, uh, a, a few people have, you know, that have gone to these meetings have had tensions in the past. And I just want to put that kind of aside and, and consider what is important amid this uh, pandemic and, amid that and that we should uh, just uh, be respectful people's time and respectful people's time. You know, like a uh, gentleman and uh, thanks, I uh, healed my time. Okay, thank you very much, Alex. Um, do we have any other public comments about Again, items unrelated to the agenda. With us, we are, so please give us the opportunity to locate you. I do believe we have, I thought I saw a hand raised, but let me double check here. He says in the comments, he has a procedural comment. Um, Eli, you can go ahead and unmute. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes. Uh, hello there. Um, this is actually uh, Naomi. I'm Eli's wife. 
and um, I'm just using his account. Um, and I'd like to add to the uh, public comment about uh, the procedure of this meeting. Uh, the first comment in the group chat from Heather Lake, um, I just wanted to uh, uplift that they request that they will need extra time because uh, they are using their account to give access to several people who do not have access to Zoom. So if uh, you all, uh, Kathleen and company, could all uh, make an accommodation for that um, because uh, Heather and the people that they are giving access to, um, they, they uh, have a special case. And I think that it will be important that not just like Heather's account will have like the, uh, the given two minutes in the public comment period, but uh, that the folks who are speaking through their phone will also uh, be eligible for two minutes each. Yes, yeah, I, yeah, I saw Heather's comment and certainly that's what I was thinking. Um, I mean, she's <clears throat> gonna be facilitating the, the comments from several people, so that makes sense that um, we're certainly not limiting her to two minutes. So. All right, thank you. I yield my time for this section of the public comment. Okay, and I think, uh, okay, we have another Jana Arthur, uh, but I'm not sure that might also be related to the special use policy and tents coming up. Does Jana have something unrelated or? Jana says yes, and there's several pages to go through. I'll see if I can help find her. Okay. <clears throat> Janice says, yes, special use, speaking later, many voices. Okay. All right. Well, it sounds like then we can come back to Jana in that section uh, as soon as we finish up here with section B, public hearings and appearances. So, um, okay. So just to make sure, wait, four new messages. Let me just check. Oh, uh, can we ask questions during public comment and get responses right away? Ask someone, you, yes, you can certainly, um, you can certainly ask questions during the public comment and as best we can, we can provide the answers. Again, these are just items that are unrelated to the agenda, just anything else that might be parks related that you have a question or a statement to make. So, okay, and I, I think if we'll, yes, you're welcome. Okay, so we'll move on. We just have, we have two other things here under our public hearings appearances. Um, first is our Parks Partner Award from Sarah Owen, which goes to IU Credit Union. Thanks, Kathleen. Uh, Sarah Owen, Community Relations Coordinator. Um, this month, we do have a Parks Partner Award that we would like to recognize uh, IU Credit Union. Uh, have a little plaque for them that will be delivered at a later date. Um, the Parks Partner Award is one that we use to recognize our most outstanding supporters and collaborators of the department. And the reason we wanted to recognize IU Credit Union is because of their long-term support. Um, in the past, they have been a multi-year sponsor of our performing arts series. And more recently, they for the past three years, they have uh, sponsored our annual pumpkin lunch. And then they have been longtime advertisers, both in our program guide and at Twin Lakes Recreation Center. And with their help, we are able to dis uh, distribute our program guides to their many locations uh, in their foyer so we can get the word out about our programming. So we are very grateful to them and we look forward to continuing to work with them. And today we have uh, David Sipes from IU Credit Union to receive the award uh, electronically over Zoom. Um, and so I'd like to offer a moment to him if he'd like to say anything. Good afternoon. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, yeah, first of all, thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, uh, and we really appreciate um, the recognition, even though it's really unnecessary. We just, we're really proud to um, support um, the Parks and Recs programs. We've just really enjoyed watching 
um, the programs grow and, and how, how much they benefit everyone in our community. Um, so it's really something we're proud to do and we really look forward to a continued partnership uh, as long as you'll have us. So <laughs> we thank you for that. Yes. Thank you for, for stopping by, David, and thank you to IU Credit Union for all of the support, the advertising, the much beloved pumpkin launch. So yes, and there's the plaque, uh, which yeah. make sure to get to you. Well, thank you all so much. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thanks. All right, and then the last item under this section is, um, it is the hard to believe, but it is the last Parks Board meeting for Les Coyne, who's been on the Parks Board for, well, Paula will tell us how long he's been on the Parks Board, but Les is going to retire from his position. So uh, we're going to take a few minutes to give some recognition and honor to Les. So Paula, can you take it from there? Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. And um, I'm gonna share my screen. Hang on just a second. We're working on Julie. Can you help me out here? Sure, click slideshow on the top bar there, Paula. Oh, got it. And there you All go. All right, there we go. Okay, and there he is. All right, thank you. Um, I'm Paula McDevitt. I am the director of the City of Bloomington Parks and Recreation Department, and it is my honor and privileged to kick off this very special recognition for Les Coyne this afternoon. I personally have known Les since uh, 1988 when I began my career, but we are going to take you through a few slides um, that will pay homage and um, bring back some memories of the past 44 years of volunteer service that Les Coyne has given the community as a board of park commissioner. And through these years, Les has served as president of the board a few times, and he has served as vice president again a few times, and as the board of park commissioners representative to the plan commission. All of these responsibilities have taken a lot of personal time, commitment, and support for the Bloomington Parks and Recreation Department. So just, uh, we went back through our history books and uh, we have some black and white photos less, uh, but um, some very representative slides. Um, and this Crestmont Block Party shows Les's commitment to the youth of our community. There have been countless ribbon cuttings and we actually found the picture of your very first ribbon cutting. We have the joint collaborative project with IU in the groundbreaking at Seminary Park. And then at Alcott Park with former park commissioner Lloyd Alcott and his wife, Joanne Alcott, who's longtime Park Foundation members. And we see former director McRen Eisen, now deputy mayor and Mayor John Fernandez. We have a groundbreaking ceremony for the Clear Creek Trail that thousands upon thousands of community members and visitors to Bloomington have enjoyed. And then we can't forget the opening of the new nine holes on the Ridge Course at Cascades Golf Course. And if memory serves me all right, it was a beautiful day with lots of golfers and participants. We also along his journey, uh, honored Les with a Heart and Hand Award. He was the recipient in 2004. And then this is just one group of fellow Park Board Commission members, Mary Catherine Carmichael, John Carter, and Joe Hoffman. Um, and we've had a lot of devoted, dedicated volunteers in our community who have served at Park Board members. And through all the term turnovers and the new members, Les has been a constant 
source of support, the historian and mentor and guide for all. And of course, the Switchyard Park groundbreaking in 2018. This timeline uh, takes us back to when Les first began as a park board commissioner back in 1976. And these are some landmark important moments in our history from acquiring land to opening new facilities, to taking land donations, a gold medal winner, creating partnerships, um, acquiring land and opportunities as they became available. And we look in the 2020s as less leaving a lasting legacy of parks for all people in Bloomington. Thank you, Les. All right. <clears throat> um, and yeah. just a few more words. I just, sure. you know, um, want, want to be able to, to see Les and just say for me personally, Les, you've been a mentor. And when I began my career and most critically in the past five years, um, I've had countless hours of conversation with you and a few ribbon cuttings and hearing Les tell me, let's go. How are you doing? Or the many times that you would stop by my office and just stick your head in my office and just say, don't want to interrupt, just checking in. Um, but know that I will uh, keep you near um, and uh, you don't get to, to stray too far. You will always be my mentor in my, my corner and, and I wanna thank you for that. Um, so I wanna thank you for your friendship regarding our department and all of the staff who have worked alongside you and who you have guided and supported for always asking us the tough questions and always wanting what is best and working hard for all of us in the community. So from me to you, thank you, Les. And Kathleen, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Congratulations, Les. <laughs> yes, if, if everyone will indulge me to use a Les phrase. Um, so I find I like, as I've been on the Board of Park Commissioners, when I wander around Bloomington, I like to look at the various sort of plaques that are up in different places on trails or, um, you know, the Ice Arena or Twin Lakes and see what, what time the property was acquired. And invariably, it has Les's name on it. Um, so his decades of service, I think, are really without parallel. I mean, since 1976, um, he's had a hand in so many things, as Paula mentioned, Switchyard Park, the Beeline Trail, the Clear Creek tra Trail, countless other connecting pathways around Bloomington. Um, and then the acquisition of some things now that I think we just take for granted, like Twin Lakes Rec Center and um, the management of the Buzz Kirk Chumley Theater. So I've also been able to see Les's commitment over the time I've been on the board to all the park users, whatever their interest is, and especially to children's programs and expanding access to recreation and summertime meals in some underserved communities. Um, he's also always been a vocal champion of the parks department and its employees. Sometimes I get really caught up in the 200 pages of the board agenda and I sort of trundling along in the meeting and Les has always been there and been good about reminding me and reminding the rest of us to appreciate all the hard work that has come from the parks department. Um, I recall my very first parks meeting, which was nearly four years ago now, and Les graciously welcomed me and instantly set to explaining what I needed to know to make informed decisions about the business before parks. Since then, he's always been available to consult, um, text or phone or Zoom or in person about meeting ideas or just brainstorm about the future of a, a facility or a program. So Les, you've been steadfast in your commitment to the Parks Board. Um, I'm sure you've logged tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of hours attending meetings, walking parts, park sites, studying maps, speaking with community members, speaking with parks partners. Um, so it's hard to imagine the next time we meet, you won't, we won't see you and you will definitely be missed. Thank you, Les. Les, I'll just um, keep it short, but our time on the board is uh, it's not been long together, but you've certainly set the bar high for 
just volunteerism and public service. And so um, I know that you'll continue to be someone that I call on as a mentor. And, um, you know, we just, we, we're so, um, I'm just in such admiration of your commitment. And, um, you know, we have a lot to thank you for. And, um, you know, it's just been wonderful to work with you. So thanks so much. I, I also agree with uh, all the previous words, with all your um, knowledge, the, the, the experience in, in the history about Bloomington in, 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 in the short period of time that I have been uh, with, with you in this, in, in this commission. It has been great to, um, to learn from you and, 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 and be a reference, be a, a model for uh, the governance and, and I really appreciate um, everything that you have shared with the, with the commission. I think we need to get. <laughs> um, Les, are you at a loss for words, Les? I think I'll keep this short, very short. <laughs> well, uh, Les, we do have a few other people. I'm gonna call on Jim Murphy, who is the president of the Bloomington Parks Foundation. You'd like to say a few words? Huh? Can you hear me? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Hello, Paul. And hi, Les. How are you doing today? Hey, Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, as uh, Paul said, uh, I am representing the Parks and Recreation Foundation Board, president uh, of the board. And as you know, we support the efforts of the Parks Department through fundraising. I'm also here as a former neighbor of Les's, and more importantly, as a friend. We've known each other for a long, long time, even before my involvement on the board. Uh, think of what Bloomington is today in the parks and think how it looked in 1976 when Les first started on the board. Um, to put this into perspective, uh, he's endured five mayors, six park directors, uh, in 1976, Elvis Presley performed in Assembly Hall, and IU had undefeated the national championship basketball team. So that puts things in purpose to uh, perspectives. And uh, Les, throughout those years, you've done some amazing things. Uh, a lot has changed over those years, but one thing that has not changed is you, Les Coyne. You have made, remained steady and steadfast and as committed as anyone could be. Uh, you show your love and your passion for the parks departments. For that, uh, we thank you so so very, very much. You know, it's bittersweet to say that after four decades that you're retiring. Wow, 44 years. It's, it's pretty amazing what you have done. It's truly incredible throughout these years and the commitment you've made to Bloomington, the parks department. Uh, you worked tirelessly through uh, those years and to support the parks and create uh, good experiences for families, joggers, runners, bike riders, nature lovers, to spend quality time in our park systems. So when I was uh, trying to decide on what I wanted to say here today, uh, I, I reached out to the Parks and Foundation Board and, and Les knows all of them, he attends all the meetings uh, he's committed on the Parks Foundation Board as he is on the Parks Board. Unless I ask each one of them to give me a one word description of you. So I added a little bit to each word. So I'm going to read those to you. And again, I've added beyond that. So friend to all. Neighbor that cares about the neighborhoods. Dedicated to make things better for others. Thorough to the smallest detail, kind and giving of both heart and your time, thoughtful of all that you do, considerate to all that you meet, effective on tasks you set to accomplish, listens to all ideas, conscientious of others, committed to make Bloomington better, passionate 
about the parts, stalwarts, which means hardworking and involved. And you've done so many things throughout your time, dedicated. This one was repeated, but it's well worth mentioning again how dedicated you are. Caring, not just for self, not just for Bloomington, but for your friends and the quality of life for others. Yes, you leave quite a legacy for all of us to live up to. We thank you for all you have done and wish you a fond farewell from the Bloomington Parks Board. Know that we, the Bloomington Parks Foundation, will continue to carry on and support the Parks Department as we have under your leadership and your guidance. We wish you the best. And on behalf of the Parks Foundation Board, congratulations and best of luck. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim. And now I'd like to introduce Deputy Mayor Mick Reneisen to say a few words. Hello, my friend. Hey, uh, I was. I'm not sure we need to hear all you know. <laughs> well, I'll keep most of that to, between us then. But I, I thought I was long in the tooth with my 40 years of service to the city as an employee. But 44 years is a phenomenal feat as a parks commissioner, that's a record I don't know that'll ever be broken. And I want the public to understand that that's out of the 99 year history of the parks board. So just think about that for a second, 44 of the 99 years of history. This parks board was formed in 1921 and it was formed to preserve the 80 acres of land known as Cascades Park, which I know all of you in our community appreciate and enjoy. During Les's tenure, the property and parks control now exceeds 2,200 acres. And a lot of that happened in 44 years of, of Les Coyne's term as a parks board member. You know, I could mention a number of projects and some of them have been mentioned already that Les was involved in in his 44 years of service, but I'm gonna name a few that I think give you some sense of why it's important to have a constant like Les Coyne involved. The first of those is the Beeline Trail, which is I think arguably been a transformative project for our community. The project spanned 20 years in the making, starting with the acquisition of property in the late 1990s. And that project was initiated based on one of the many community surveys that Parks conducted and conducts to these days under Les's leadership. By the way, that survey said in 1996 that building trails was the most import important asset that was lacking in the community. You ask the same question 20 years later, now 24 years later, it's the same answer. People still crave trails and trail connections in our community. And that leadership, that constant of, of a board member who understood that and watched that happen over all those decades has really been important. The second project I would mention uh, would be related to the early property acquisition that happened in the, for the Beeline Trail. And that's this little switching facility adjacent to the Beeline Trail. I, I think we call that area now Switchard Park for a reason. Uh, that happened as a result of a 20-year effort to acquire property, to master plan it, to have numerous community conversations, to continue to have the community surveys, and ultimately to see what you all now see and can enjoy now, uh, known as Switchard Park. On a personal note, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to say something, a, a famous quote from last that I didn't want to skip over, uh, and it's one of my favorites. Les would always tell me, reach for... the extra 10% margin of excellence when you can. He would always tell me that turns a good project into a great project. I'll never forget that statement. Um, then I think the community can see evidence of that 10% margin of excellence in Switchard Park today, just as one example of, of what that meant to our community. On a personal note, Les, we had nearly a thousand lunches together in my 20 year tenure as parks director. I know that sounds crazy to the community, but we met every Thursday for lunch for 20 years. And over those 20 years, we discussed challenges and opportunities for the park system. Uh, it's also where we formed a very strong friendship, one that I value today, just like I did uh, as it formed over those 20 years and as my term in parks director. So my friend, thanks for all you've done for our community. You leave a tremendous legacy that residents and visitors will enjoy for centuries to come. And I mean centuries to come. All the best in your future endeavors. I hope you spend your free time enjoying all that you helped create. 
Thank you, Mick, for the very kind words. You are a dear friend. You as well. I'll turn it over to Mayor Hamilton, who I think is our concluding speaker today. I know, Les, this is very uncomfortable. You're not a person who likes to have a lot of attention paid, but you deserve it. Mute. There we go. <laughs> They have to do it to me all the time, Mayor. <laughs> You're still on mute. Tim, lost him. There we go. How about that? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Anyway, listen, uh, Les, I'm going to pile on. You got to just deal with it. Um, I'm uh, trying. I, I want to, uh, I got a little proclamation to do here, and I'll do it in an annotated way if the, if the chair will allow me. I, I won't be too long, but. Look, I want to just, um, I, I count up, your, I'm your fifth mayor. You started with McCloskey, through Allison, through Fernandez, through Cruzan, through Hamilton. As Mick mentioned, the Parks Board existed for 45 years without you, and then 44 years with you. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing. And uh, what, a, what a wonderful legacy, uh, Les, and it's been such a pleasure to uh, work with you, but also on behalf of all five mayors and, and the tens of thousands of, of uh, the residents that you've helped access the park and millions of visitors who come to our community. I wanna, I wanna thank you. I will just read this proclamation, uh, not all of it. You'll get a formal copy that you can, um, you can do whatever you want with. Uh, but um, this begins a proclamation, whereas Leslie J. Coyne, his long and storied history with the City of Bloomington Parks and Recreation Department dates back to January 20th, 1976, when he was first appointed to the Board of Commissioners, Park Commissioners meeting. And uh, I'm gonna skip some, whereas uh, your commitment to supporting youth has been demonstrated through more than four decades, also as a member of the Bloomington Parks Foundation Board of Directors who provided scholarships for youth and accepted endowments and gifts of land for the Bloomington Parks and Recreation Department. Whereas Les's leadership on the Board of Parks Commissioner has been pivotal in guiding the department through the proce process of conducting community surveys, collecting input from stakeholders, developing no fewer than six five-year master plans. Think about that through the history of helping steward six of those five-year plans that focus the department's goals on serving the needs of the Bloomington community. Whereas the above distinctions, and there are many others, would not have been possible without the thoughtful persistence of suggestion, and you heard this from Mick, and you can tell it meant a lot to Mick, to reach for that extra 10% margin of excellence that you insisted on. And that look, I'm just annotating, that's a reminder that the, the, the focus on not just getting it done, not just doing what needs to be done, but remembering that that extra step, 10% isn't a lot, but 10% over time, doing it 10% better, just makes such a difference. And Les, congratulations um, on, on that approach and that impact, um, whether it's the now three square miles, more than three square miles of parks. And just for folks to put that in context, Bloomington is only totally 20 some square miles, uh, so that's really wonderful, whether it's the 30 miles of trails, uh, many other things. Um, uh, close, whereas for generations to come, the City of Bloomington Parks and Recreation Department parks and facilities will remain a fitting tribute to the remarkable dedication and accomplishment of Board of Park Commissioner member Les Coyne. Now, therefore, I, like five mayors, have the right to do the following. I, John Hamilton, mayor of the city of Bloomington, do hereby proclaim December 8, 2020, as Les Coin Day in Bloomington, Indiana. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Les, thank you. Congratulations. Bon voyage. Uh, and and uh, thank you on the bottom, from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words, John. I appreciate it. And... Uh... 
do I make comments? <laughs> sure, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> First, I'd like to thank the person that allowed me to do this in effect, that gave me enough slack to spend the time, and that's my wife, Anne. Uh, she sits here beside me now. Uh, <clears throat> it's been a labor of love. Uh, it's one of the best volunteer jobs in, in the city. And you have a chance to have an impact in some incredibly positive ways. And uh, that, that's what drove me for those years. I could keep seeing the wonderful things that happened and it kept motivating me to continue to help. The other component of it has been the incredible people that I've had a chance to work with, particularly within the department. So often you see the faces of the folks that bring you these services and these incredible city departments. But Bloomington is blessed in a, in a very important way. We have some of the best, the brightest, and most talented people available to us to do those jobs in those departments, and, and most markedly in Parks and Rec, that can, can deliver to this community an incredible product. And this, is, this department is an incredible product. It's a pleasure to be associated with it. It's, a, it's an honor. Uh, and I've, I've benefited from it for many years. <clears throat> but I think it's time that you bring us some young whippersnapper that wants to change the world and, and, and uh, go for it. Uh, my, uh, my run has been great. I thank everyone for the kind words and uh, chance to do this. Right. Thank you, Les. Thank you very much. But don't leave because we still have a lot of items Some on more. <laughs> All right. So um, we will move into the other business. And um, we do have uh, 223 participants here at last count and still people coming in. So uh, I imagine a lot of people want to speak to the special use policy update. Um, and that is the first item on the agenda here. Um, so we'll have a presentation on that from Paula McDevitt. And then if you'd like to speak, just, just bear with us because there's a lot going on on the screen here. And Ellen Rodkey is going to help us see if you have your hand up or you've commented that you'd like to speak. And we would ask people to keep it to two minutes so we can try to get in as many um, participants who would like to speak as possible. So, uh, okay. So Paula, can you go ahead and tell us about C1? the special use policy 13040 update. Yes, thank you very much. Paul McDevitt, Director of City of Bloomington Parks and Recreation and staff recommends uh, approval of the update to policy 13040, the special use policy. The Bloomington Parks and Recreation Department operates under policies approved by the Board of Park Commissioners. The parks properties and facilities under the authority of the Board of Park Commissioners and the Bloomington Parks and Recreation Department are intended for the recreational use and enjoyment for all people in the community. The department is responsible for maintaining parks, facilities, trails, and program spaces throughout the park system. Several park locations and facilities have been occupied by camping structures and makeshift structures prohibiting the use and enjoyment of these spaces by the whole community. These structures are oftentimes in use and are in violation of the special use policy as it's written. In addition, the department has allocated additional resources in order to maintain these areas, which under these current conditions are public health risks, frequently vandalized and overflowing with garbage. The parks, the park and facility special use policy is in place to facilitate individuals or groups usage on a reserved or special basis as time, resources and space permit, providing that the intended use is consistent with department objectives and is in the best interest of the city of Bloomington. 
So the policy update that is before you to be um, updated falls under the section of what, how special permits are awarded and approved. And the following um, policy reads, no person shall conduct, operate, present, manage, or take part in the following activities in a park or at a department owned facility unless a special use permit is obtained from the department administrator or their appointed representative prior to the start of that activity. Under this section, item three currently reads, camping on lands of the department or inhabiting any structure of facility overnight without a permit. Park hours are 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. and that constitutes overnight. The proposed wording is camping upon or otherwise inhabiting any property, structure, or facility of the department at any time without a permit. I have fielded a lot of questions in the past couple of days um, about this proposal and been asked specifically what is the plan. And I'd like to take the opportunity to communicate that this has um, been discussed and the city of Bloomington team, we recognize that this is a change that was going to affect people who are currently in several of our parks um, under structures, in tents, otherwise occupying spaces and not allowing others in our community to use those spaces. And we understand that people have needs, that these, they're in, we're in the middle of a pandemic, um, that they oftentimes are not aware of the resources that are available to them. And because of this, we have reached out to our isolation shelter partners and our public health in parks partners to talk about the issue and to plan how we can together work with people who are living under these conditions to identify resources, to sit and talk about what their needs are, where their challenges are, and to communicate what resources are available, that there are daytime shelters, that there are beds available for overnight shelters, and what who needs to connect the dots to provide these services so that people are taken care of who are currently living under these conditions in several of our parks. Um, and I'm happy to say that our partners are, are responding, um, whether it's with uh, staff resources, street social workers who are prepared to go out. And we realize this is going to take some time to do. Um, and it's nothing that, that we believe is going to happen overnight. We want to open the door, work collaboratively with our partners so that parks can maintain these areas and keep them up kept and clean and safe. And that our partners can do the hard work of social work, mental health services, overnight shelters, daytime shelters, um, access to food, um, access to medical care, if that's what it is. We really want to get in and work with people who are experiencing these extreme living conditions at this time. Um, on the call, um, and if you have additional questions about those services, several of our partners are in this meeting this afternoon, along with uh, Beverly Callender Anderson from the Community and Family Resources with the city. Um, Captain Scott Oldham, who coordinates the uh, DROs and the neighborhood resource officers. And we would all be happy to answer any questions that you have about our plan to help facilitate services for people who would be affected by this policy change. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Paula. Um, I think before we go to board member comments and public comments, I think it would be interesting for us to hear from some of the social service agencies and also the partnership that's been going on. I know I was down in Seminary Square during the time that the table was set up with information and testing. And do we have anybody in the meeting here could kind of speak to how that went and hooking, you know, unhoused people up with resources during that time and. Um. Becky Higgins, our recreation director, is on the call. Becky, if you'd like to respond to the public health and parks. 
Sure, I'm happy to. Um, it actually went very well. And with the help of our different partners, we were able to connect with different people who were in the park, talk to them, actually gain some back and forth dialogue. Um, we did this for the months of September, October, and November as a trial period to see how it went. We are bringing in all the data from that now and examining it um, with our health and wellness coordinator and our partners and looking at the future of that for next year as well. Um, okay, I'll jump, I'll jump in here and say that that particular um, program has really illustrated that working in partnership and collaboration is working. Um, we were able as parks, we had the park but our community partners, which I'd like to give a shout out to, Centerstone, I believe Greg is on this call, IU Health Bloomington and the Monroe County Health Department were all there every step of the way along with our DROs and the BPD social worker. And it, it took that effort and that presence, which we will continue in um, that effort um, as this policy if it is passed, how it would affect people, that we know that it takes time to build relationships and to talk to people and find out what their needs are. But that program definitely um, showed us that a lot can be gained from working with our partners who are the experts in this field and area. Okay, all right. Um, thank you, Paula. And uh, let, me, let me just check in with Greg for a second and see if he wanted to make a comment before we move over to, because I know we have some folks standing by in Seminary Square. Greg, did you want to comment anything first, Greg from Centerstone? Okay. All right. And I'm sorry, we've had, there's so much chat and so many names. I think it's Heather maybe who has the, the folks down there at Seminary Square who would like to speak. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. It's Heather. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So if we can, if we I've can... asked her to unmute. Okay. Thank you, Ellen. Yeah. She probably. Let me see. Hello. Okay. She's here. I think we okay. can hear her now. Okay. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you, Heather. All right. Well, I have to take a minute now and find the people. Um, I would uh, just like to say that um, until we have an adequate alternate solution, I don't think throwing people out is a good answer. And um, I think I have someone here in this minute who would like to speak. Okay. Just a moment. You want to talk? All right, we've got somebody talking here. Yes. Hi, how are you, ma'am? Um, I've I, been trying to come up with this uh, nonprofit organization foundation, and it's called uh, Lost Hopes. It's uh, like we provide tents for people who can't get into homeless shelters and have no place to go, and we're trying to get to where we can get them on like a housing program or into housing afterwards. And maybe we can get like a little piece of uh, property. There's a, a little land next to Salam Center here in Bloomington that maybe we can uh, establish like maybe a, tw a, a 20 uh, tent area and make like a little tent homeless, emergency homeless to get out of the rain at nighttime or the snow and the cold. And we can have it to where we can just pitch them up at nighttime and have them go down by morning. You know what I mean? By before the businesses open up. And make sure it ain't like it was here at Seminary Park, man. The trash here, it, it, it made it look bad. A lot of us, some of us out here don't live that bad and, or like that at all. And it makes us look bad when other people live like that, live like that. And we're trying to get everybody into the same kind of rhythm to where it's cleaned up, not looking trashy, and presentable to people who are, who are by, bypassing in their cars or walking down the street. They're not going to look at it and shake their head in shame of all the trash and shit. They're going to be like, man, that looks pretty cool. Let's go over and check out their little, you know what I mean? And be interested in it, instead of looking apart, you know what I mean? Because some of us out here, we're actually trying, like, 
I always wanted to start for like I was I got like four five tenths. I almost set up one of the tenths as a uh, like a um, bike uh, a bike uh, project. Like where you, we work on your bike for free. Um, to a place where you can work on your bike, still say we'll have around the clock security. We will probably ride during the screen weekly for for the town, and uh, and we'll just keep it cleaned up. We, we provide our own plumbing, so it says that we can use third plumbing and, until we can get uh, the federal uh, or the buddy to uh, have plumbing installed into the, into that uh, property. I mean, it shouldn't take much, but I mean, with a little help and a little uh, cooperation, working together with each other instead of like going against each other. A lot of those, those point like. Everybody, everybody's taking pictures out here, and we we don't feel like we're being helped too much by having pictures being taken of us like that, and a story being to put out there of us by other people that don't even experience a day of homelessness or being out here at night time, and so what it feels like to be lost or without hope, and we just want to give somebody that feels like that. That, a, a that is our two minutes. Okay, if you just, I'm sorry, I want to finish up your last thought there. Over the two minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, and, uh, maybe, maybe we can uh, all get cooperation and, and maybe we can get like 50, 50 signatures from the community saying that they have no problem with us starting a, 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 a organization like that as long as we keep it up to standard. Okay. Thank you, Thank you for your comment. Heather, do we have uh, someone else there? We have someone else just a moment. I'm okay. finding them. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I'm looking for this person. Did you want to talk? Yeah, we can go down the question. All right, you on. Hello, how you doing? Hello. Can you hear him? Hello. Hello, yeah, we can hear you. Hey, you're good to see you. Wow. Hello, how you doing? Okay, uh, Okay, my name's, uh, hold on, my name's Eric Alfred, I'm going to see you, I came down here for one reason, I don't know why, I've been locked up, the only time I've been here, because, oh, uh, the people are here, they're not, they're not people at home, they're not, they're not nice, the elders are nice, the children are nice, they're going to be walking around, I said, I think you might expect it, I'm going to say my age, and the elders are going to be here. What was your idea earlier about, like, the people? Do you know the land, we've got our own place, the town is going to be taking on, they all took it down. I like to have a campsite at home. I said I had it by his park. I mean, I'd probably resolve it. We got the county paper with it. You know that. The guy has something like that. That'd be nice to have a home old spot where we can all you know, be together on the outside. Absolutely. And we'll clean up all this mess. We'll get it all cleaned up. And they get, if they work with us, we'll over there. Thank you so much. All right. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And all right. I think for now that who we have speaking. Thank you for giving me the extra time. Okay, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Thank, thank you, Heather. Um, I know we have lots of other people who'd like to, to speak. And um, um, Kathleen, I've been yeah. trying to make a list up as I see sure. hands go up. So thank if you. you would like, I will stop, start at the top of my list. Sure. Um, and it looks like, hold on, I'm, bear with me. There are so many to sort through here. Let me get back up to where we were. I believe it's Katie Norris is what I have next. Let me see if I can locate her. All right, anyway, thank you. Yes, uh -huh. thank you. Katie, you should be ready to go. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi, thank you for allowing me to speak. My name's Katie Norris and I'm the executive director of the Hotels for Homeless program. Um, I'd like to state that I completely agree that there should not be tents set up at Seminary Square with our most vulnerable people in our community residing in them in the middle of winter during a pandemic. 
I, however, do not agree that kicking them out tonight and not allowing them to set up during the day is the answer to this problem. I visited the park yesterday and then again today, and those who are living there have agreed to keep the park clean themselves until we can come together as a community and find a better place for them to be. I have some beautiful pictures of the work that they've done over the last 24 hours to clean up every inch of that park. Um, and not a single one of these people want to be living in tents in a city park in the middle of winter in the midst of a deadly pandemic. But just as we, the community, have not come up with a better idea, neither have they. As a member of this community, I'd like to request that we work together to find a solution. And while we do so, we give the people staying at the park just a little more time to be a part of that solution. We need to hear their voices and help them in every way we can. Kicking them out today will only further the problem we are all as a community trying to resolve. Next week, we will be back where we started having another meeting about the next location these desperate cold and exhausted people uh, have found in hopes of surviving the winter and this deadly virus. Um, I am willing to personally go down there and work with each one of them to decide if we can get them into places like Wheeler or Friends Place or into my program, the Hotels for Homeless program, our program. Um, and I, I, you know, I'm willing to do as much casework as I can individually and see what we can do to get as many people cleared out as quickly as possible with the idea that they continue to keep it clean. I have made it very clear to them that this is, you know, a city in, in my town where my children live and I expect it to be clean with uh, nothing dangerous in the park. So I would personally like to beg the city that we allow them to stay until we come up with a better idea. Uh, I will discuss options and ideas with anyone who wants to game plan with me. I will use my resources and connections to assist in every way possible. I have seen this community work together in miraculous ways during this pandemic, and I have faith that we can do so here as well. Um, my personal email address is K-N-O-R-R-I-S. 1615 at gmail.com and anybody here in this meeting is more than welcome to email me game plan and I will work with them to the best of my ability. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it and let me know what I can do to help. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katie. All right. Thank you. Yes. And we'll go to the next speaker. And it looks like Tim C. If you will introduce yourself and. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, Tim. Thank you. Um, my name is Timothy Clark. Um, I live on the near west side here in Bloomington, out by Ninth Street Park. Um, thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk to y'all. Um, I just want to say that, like, I first want to acknowledge that, like, the Parks Department is not responsible for um, the problem of there not being enough housing in this community. That's the fact that we have a very exclusionary housing market. It's the fact that our city budgets are not adequate at this time to the task of housing people. And there's a lot of reasons like why this is a really big problem. Um, but the city cannot like look at this problem in isolation and we can't just like narrow our view to only the tents and saying that if we get rid of the tents, then we've solved the problem. Because people have to go somewhere else, right? And when I listened to the park department say that, okay, we're gonna institute this rule where we can't have tents during the day, and we're also going to bring in these other social programs to help, I want to really push back and challenge that assumption that that's going to work. I think that the current services that exist are wholly inadequate, and everyone on the board, kind of at the, at the back of their mind, they know that this is true. If all of these services were so effective, then why are there still tents in the parks? If our services, of, if we are not going to do a housing first policy on a statewide level, on a citywide level rather, um, and we're going to rely on this system of shelters and charities and like individual gratitude, then we should be able to prove that that actually works. And thus far, we've proven that it doesn't. So if we are to get rid of tents in the park, then we're going to affirm a system that we know doesn't work. And we're just going to like enact violence against the people who are the victims of that system. And I think that's really would be a gigantic mistake. I'm sure a lot of other people will make a lot of other points. I just want to make that challenge that if you really think we can solve this problem without greater action, 
then why do we still see this tense? I would really love to hear an answer on that point. Okay, thank you, thank you, Tim. Um, all right, and I believe Mark Teller is our next. Hi, how are we? Um, my name is Mark Teller. I'm a member of the Bloomington Homeless Coalition. Uh, I think it goes without saying that I think this is a horrible idea to kick people out of their tents in the middle of a pandemic in the beginning of a winter without any alternative. Now, you've said, I've heard things mentioned about resources that they don't use. They can't use those resources. A lot of times you can't get a bed if you're not an addict or you can't get a bed if you don't uh, check all of the boxes. It's not that there are beds and these people are refusing to use them. It's that they are not offered the beds. They're empty because they don't want people in them. We deal with this all the time. I talk to people all the time. With that being said, I'm gonna segue to a quote from the CDC regarding this very thing. This is from the CDC guidelines regarding COVID. If individual housing options are not available, allow people who are living unsheltered or in encampments to remain where they are. Clearing encampments can cause people to disperse throughout the community and break connections with service providers. This increases the potential for infectious disease spread. Now that's just talking about COVID. I haven't even talked about the fact that one of my board members already has issues with, with the cold. He can't walk sometimes because he's got frostbite on his feet. That's a board member. And you wanna kick him out of his tent? That is time. Shame. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mark, for your comment. Um, and uh, I think we are, we are Nicole Johnson next. Yes, is that, that right, is, Kim? and I have unmuted her. So Nicole, you should be ready to go. Hi, um, thank you so much for bearing with me. I am a mom. Uh, I would like to just say a couple of things. The first thing I wanna say is that I am, my name is Nicole Johnson, I am the, uh, I'm the director of Pigeon Hill uh, Pantry, and uh, we have recently started working um, with members of people in the park, trying to help them get their basic documents, using the services, helping them navigate the current services um, that are available uh, to get the things that they need in order to get uh into um, to get where we're trying to get public housing applications for the RAD program filled out for people who qualify. Um, so that's one way that we're trying to assist people with existing services, uh, which I would like to amplify the first gentleman who said that if this wasn't a problem, or if, this, uh, if they were doing their job, then this wouldn't be a problem, basically. Yeah. Uh, the homeless in this community feel like they are always being watched, even by those they seek services from. They do not have a place to be off the record. A year-round no-barrier community drop-in center for the shelters run by the homeless for the homeless could be a solution to many problems, including how homeless individuals banned from services through other organizations access resources to empowering the community itself to care for themselves and each other. Banneker has a sat empty forever, even pre-pandemic. This is the only thing that has ever happened there was a mass project for a minute and beautiful Black Lives Matter mural, which very few people actually see. The gym could be the shelter, the third floor reserved for women. It has a safe serve certified kitchen and bathrooms without showers. That would be an issue. But for short term, this could work. The library could be used for casework. People who don't want to be inside and want to stay in their tents could be in the backyard. Even if Shalom and Friends wanted and Friends Place wanted to, they can't offer services to everyone because of the restrictions on occupancy. Okay. That is, that is time. Thank you, Nicole. All right, 
Thank you. And the next speaker, I believe, is that Alex? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. So um, <clears throat> I want to mention how, so what, what this policy aims to do, right, is to get people out of encampments. That, that's what this policy seeks to do. And my case is that it doesn't work at doing that. And how do I know it doesn't work at doing that? Well, there's already a nighttime ban. It doesn't work. All it does is change the words. What does changing the words do? How does that change the circumstances? Now, let me, um, let me put my emotion aside and uh, read some alternative ideas. Because I, I think what we need to think about is alternative ideas. And there's, there's a few that I have written down that you know, that I, I, I think would help. And just, and, and before I get to the alternatives, I want to say that simply just kicking, like, like kicking them out isn't going to do it. That, that takes taxpayer dollars to enforce. And what, what you want to do is clean up the parks, right? And cleaning up the parks, that's gonna, to, to do that, we could hire people to clean up the parks. That's, that's one alternative that I think the parks board can do. Instead of paying taxpayer dollars for BPD overtime, which we know is a lot. We've done that before for other things. Uh, why not just uh, hire people to clean it up? And we already have volunteers from the Bloomington Hom Homeless Coalition clean things up. So I think that would be good, you know, put cash in people's pockets who work hard and exercise personal responsibility. And uh, also I, I, I think the nighttime ban is bad. So let's vote that down too. And uh, let's come up with a shelter. We, we have a few options, Banneker Gym, for example. There's been an Ubuntu shelter proposal that has been an idea since 2013. I suggest looking at that. Let's create a houseless bill of rights while we're at it, because I think you know everyone should have human rights. And, and I've, I've talked to many houseless individuals who aren't treated fairly at all. And, and that is our time. OK. Thank, thank you, Alex, for speaking. Thank you. Okay, and um, I think we, next up looks like is David Warren. Correct. All right, can you hear me? Yes, yes. David. All right, good afternoon, and thank you for listening to the public. Uh, I comment today asking that you please vote against this policy update that would make it illegal to erect and be inside a tent in public parks. Like many cities, uh, Bloomington, to its credit, pursued greater flexibility for our great downtown local restaurants the past few months by allowing them to set up tents, tables, bubbles, and other structures in streets and on sidewalks to help these businesses weather the storm of the pandemic. The CDC suggests similar care and flexibility should be pursued for homeless communities throughout the United States. Yet now the city of Bloomington is considering a policy change that would actually remove flexibility for some of our most vulnerable residents and make it illegal to set up temporary shelter from the winter elements during a worsening pandemic. Yes, our community has public and nonprofit organizations and initiatives that serve the homeless community, but clearly those resources are not nearly enough to fully address the problem. Banning tents in public parks simply passes more responsibilities onto other entities in a time of local, state, and national crisis. Please do not send the message that flexibility and understanding and protections from harm are more likely to be extended to Bloomington residents with more political and economic power. There is too much not in my backyard sentiment throughout the community, which often turns into not in my neighborhood sentiment. And now the local government is taking a not in my parks position on tents. For some reason, shelter is the only basic human necessity we treat this way. We would never take food away from someone who is starving or water away from someone who is dehydrated. Don't make it easier to criminalize the provision of shelter for those who often have none. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, all right. And is Ashley the next speaker, I believe? Yes. Can you hear me OK? Yes. OK. So this is going to piggyback a lot off of what Dave Warren said. Um, this is Ashley Perani, Bloomington resident. And I want to read directly from the CDC guidance for encampments. Consideration for encampments, if individual housing options are not available, allow people who are living unsheltered or in encampments to remain where they are. Clearing encampments can cause people to disperse throughout the community 
and right connections with service providers. This increases the potential for infectious disease spread. Encourage those staying in encampments to set up their tents, sleeping quarters with at least 12 by 12 feet of space per individual. If an encampment is not able to provide sufficient space for each person, allow people to remain where they are, but help decompress the encampment by linking those at an increased risk for severe illness to individual rooms or safe shelter. Work together with community coalition members to improve sanitation in encampments. Ensure nearby restroom facilities have functional ta water taps, are stocked with hygiene materials such as soap and drying materials, bath tissue, and remain open to people experiencing homelessness 24 hours per day. If toilets or hand washing facilities are not available nearby, assist with a providing access to portable latrines with hand washing facilities for encampments or more than 10, for more than 10 people. These facilities should be equipped with hand sanitizer. I don't think that's too much to ask. I think it's cruel and it's heartless that this is even coming up at all, let alone in the midst of a pandemic that's killing millions of Americans and people worldwide. You should all be ashamed of yourselves that you're even considering such. That is time. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. I'm next to, could be Eli, although Eli's partner or spouse also, I think was, there might be two people your time under the Eli, yeah. Okay. There are two of us. Thank you, Kathleen. All right, um, this is uh, Naomi Parker Reyes. And uh, just to, uh, I'd like to speak specifically to Paula since uh, she was the one who uh, wrote the recommendation. Um, let me just uh, read what I've got here. Um, so uh, in response to your letter, to your recommendation details, I just wanted to reiterate that the people who are living in the park right now in these desperate times, they're also part of our community. You know, your letter does say the enjoyment of the whole community. These people are part of our community. And as the Parks Department, you have the resources as well as the, um, oh, sorry, <laughs> that was a chair. You have the resources as well as the connections to the other parts of the city to finally make housing for our homeless population a reality. I mean, you are building Switchyard Park, this massive project, just as the previous speaker uh, implied, you should have enough money to put a, uh, like, to put uh, sanitation services as the person who was running the homeless coalition said, uh, they're already working to keep the place clean. And if you do decide to fin it to <coughs> get people out of their out of their tents right now, you are just pushing the problem out of sight, out of mind. Again, this keeps happening. I've lived here several years in this in the city, and for years there have been many plans by nonprofits as well as like other uh, government and non-government organizations to help people to finally like have a co comprehensive plan. So if you kick people out of their tents right now without an immediate place where people can be safe and stay right now, tonight, like all of these hotels and all of these apartment buildings that are empty right now, you are sentencing somebody to death. That is time. <laughs> Right. Thank you for your comment. And then, uh, uh, then it's time for Eli. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is Eli. Um, and I just kind of want to echo a similar sentiment uh, that my partner just said, um, arguing that, uh, that the, com the community is being prevented from using these parks. Uh, these parks are being used by members of our community and are brought they're using it this way because our broader community has failed them and honestly the the priorities i've been seeing in this in this meeting are very transparent and not in a good way i'm getting the sense that 
the people, the community they're referring to is mostly people who are not homeless and able to just enjoy a park whenever they want. Um, if those, the people that you're referring to, they're going, if they're going to a park, they'll be driving to Bryan Park or the Cedars or Griffey Lake or Lake Monroe. They're not likely to go to like a small strip of landscaping between college and walnuts just so they can take in that glorious Kroger view. Um, and we're really, this policy is not only in violation of CDC guidelines, it's really putting the cart before the horse on setting up an alternative before you tear up all these tents. Um, it's just as bad, if not worse, than what Republicans were trying to do by repealing the Affordable Care Act without implementing a replacement. I yield the rest of my time. Right. Thank you, Eli. And um, by the way, I just just a appreciation to everyone for sticking to the time. I know two minutes is not a lot, but we do want to try to get in all of our speakers here. So I believe Kathy is next. Yes. Okay. Um, my name is Kathy Crabtree, and I've lived in the community of Bloomington for over 30 years. Um, I ask the board members to vote against these restrictions on the use of our parks. Um, it appears that the recreational use and enjoyment of a few community members is being prioritized over the homeless folks' health and safety. And I want to reiterate what several people have said, but the homeless folks are part of our community. That's why they are our responsibility. I think this is cruel and heartless, and I can't believe that we're even considering evicting folks when we have no alternatives to offer them. Study the alternatives first. Don't say you're gonna kick them out and then study the alternatives. I really question this city's priorities. Being poor should not be a crime. Housing is a human right, and you need to follow the CDC guidelines. We follow them for everything else. Why would we not follow them for this? So please vote no on this. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. And I believe that Jana is next. Correct. Hi, everybody. Um, so I, I have a direct question for the parks department and i did speak with a reporter from wfhb and i've called the national coalition of the homeless and i'm talking to the american civil liberties union and me and my friends me and my friends are working on this but i did call the director of the parks department um representing the bloomington homeless coalition she was unable to get back with me which is really frustrating to me um but i do know that y'all put up a table and y'all set up in that park and y'all wanted to play friends with my people and watch them and make your little list to make your little plans to kick them out and you know i'm getting real sick and tired of being kicked out of my own town by the city and the county you know, I sat up there at the courthouse and I was there with my people and we were fighting and y'all kicked us out. And now you're gonna come for people in a pandemic in winter and y'all gonna tell them we ain't got no place for you. And we're not willing to fucking, I'm sorry, I said the cuss word. We're not willing to do some zoning to help Beacon and Shalom put these people up. So you don't have to look at their mental health and you don't have to look at how their f friends and family, and this is Christmas. I don't like the holidays. I love God, but I'm not religious, but some people do care about their families that have left them homeless, that have literally stolen everything from them and messed them over. And furthermore, I have prepared statements, written statements um, from other people, and I would like the opportunity. I am so emotional because I sit down there and I hold hands with people and every year somebody dies and people are going to die. Why will you not let them have a tent? So me and the rest of the community and we can give them some blankets so they don't die. Why are you gonna kill people? Why are you gonna take away their tents and let them die? And I would like to read a statement from Trevor Richardson. I will take the time to find it on my computer. Um, he is the communications director of the Bloomington Homeless Coalition. I've asked him to prepare a statement and I'm going to find um, that statement and I'm just I'm just I'm just so fresh I'm just so frustrated um, with all these people and all their little stories and I hear my bell so I'm gonna find the prepared statement but like I, I am just so I'm just so devastated um, yeah okay um, thank, 
Thank you, Janet. Why don't you hey. find the statement? And if you have right. it, go ahead. If not, I, we can come back. I have it. I have okay. it. Like, I would like 20 seconds for you to let me calm sure. down and find it because I'm going to work tonight. I called in yesterday. Please give me 20 seconds. Okay, sure. That's fine. <sighs> I just can't remember which like media he put it in. Um, crap. Okay, well, I guess I can't find it in 20 seconds. Um, I just really wish I could find it. Um, okay, if if you can, I understand you, if you we're, yeah, I understand. If you can't find it now and you want to share it with us later, email it to us or email it to the department or if you're still no, I, I would like to read it publicly and here's what I'm gonna do since I have to go to work I'm gonna delegate it to someone else and let okay. them handle it okay y'all have a all good right. day and please vote this down my people have nowhere to go all right thank you and I believe Ross is next yes hello everyone can you hear me yes Good, thank you uh, very much for uh, taking the time to listen to the public. Uh, happy Less Coin Day. I'm not sure if the greeting is Merry Coin Miss or, or what have you. Um, I want to offer my, I, I'm, uh, my name is Ross Martini Ayer. I live in Bloomington, Indiana. I work with the Bloomington Christian Radical Catholic Worker. I'm also on the board of Beacon, formerly the Shalom Community Center, though I'm a appearing in my own personal capacity. Um, and I just want to agree with the public sentiment that has been shared thus far. I hope you vote this down. Um, or if you need to pass it, at least pass it with an amendment that it doesn't take effect until after the pandemic numbers are under control. Um, it's an emergency situation that we're in with the pandemic. Uh, I could tell you that the folks at a friend's place and other shelters in town are doing all that they can to offer spaces to people and they want as few bodies in those shelters as possible, that they will take people who come through the door, but none of our shelters in town want more people showing up at them. If folks are able to safely uh, habitate in tents or in other makeshift dwellings, that is the safest possibility for folks. Um, that's, that's my perspective, and I think folks have vouched that with the CDC uh, references made today. It is safer for everyone and more humane to leave this aside and not evict these people until the pandemic, uh, ever, frankly, but at least until the pandemic is over. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ross. All right, and next is an email, spurlma at iu.edu. Hi, yes, that's me, Savannah Perlman. Sorry, oh. let me read it. Oh, yeah. um, yeah, so I want to start off by echoing the sentiments of virtually everyone, um, which is that as a community member, I'm just like really ashamed that this is even up for debate. It almost feels like a Parks and Rec episode. Like these tents are the little bit of cloth between these folks and freezing to death. And I can't believe that that's something you want to take away um, in the middle of a pandemic in the middle of winter, right before Christmas, like without offering an alternative, like it's almost, if it weren't so tragic, it would be laughable. Um, and what I don't understand is like the motivation here. What is the deal? We want to get them out of sight, like so you can have a prettier park. Is that the desire? Um, especially after listening to the first hour of this meeting, talking about how you're all so proud that you've created parks for everyone. You said the parks are for all, for everyone. I was right here, we all heard you say it. And it's unreal that you can say that while purposely trying to get homeless people out of this park. So I really want to know, like, why are you doing this? Um, and I, that's not even like a rhetorical question because the only answer I can think of is like, that you think for some reason having tents in these parks prevents upper middle class people from using the parks. But it doesn't prevent them from going to the parks. If the parks are dirty, we can hire people to clean up the parks. We have plenty of money to do that. Um, and, you know, I think it would be a good learning opportunity for families or individuals who are middle and upper, upper class to see that these folks are a part of our community and like that poverty does exist right here in our city. Um, and I mean, I'm guilty of this as well. Like I live in a nice downtown apartment and I'm two blocks from Seminary Square, but I was there two days ago. Like I know what these folks are living like and I don't take that for granted. So, 
I, I just want to say that working with people to identify resources is not an acceptable thing to do. Like if you're also pulling the rug out from people who have nowhere else to go. Um, and shame on you guys for pretending to care with your words and saying the exact opposite with your actions. If this passes, I agree with Jada. I think that somebody is going to freeze to death and that that's gonna be on you. So I hope that we have another meeting in the future where we actually talk about what we can do for the homeless instead of against the homeless. And I hope you guys will keep us posted for when that meeting is scheduled. All right, thank you very much. Um, and I believe Jarrett is next. Yes. Okay. Yeah, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. All right. Hello, my name is Jared Alexander, and I am here today because unlike far too many people in this city, I care about the unhoused and housing insecure. As a lifelong resident of Bloomington, I have watched the city and its various institutional arms treat the homeless population in the most disrespectful and dehumanizing ways. I have seen homeless people herded from one park to another as if they are livestock in order to get them away from the university and as far away from the university in Kirkwood as possible. I have watched the city and county institute policy after policy and regulation after regulation that are nothing more than thinly veiled attempts to prevent these individuals from simply existing on city or county property. We are in the middle of a pandemic that has already taken nearly 300,000 lives in this country alone. We are in the middle of an eviction and unemployment crisis unlike anything we've seen in years. We are in the middle of winter. And yet this body is still going after the homeless, this time in an attempt to leave unhoused individuals with no protection from the winter weather by outlawing tents in public parks. Wilmington prides itself on being a progressive community, but the action I've seen the city and county governments take against homeless people is anything but progressive. It is often said that the true measure of any society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable members. And if that's how we wanna measure this city and this county, then we're doing a pretty poor job at living up to those progressive ideals, aren't we? Voting for this ban on tents in public parks will do nothing more than continue the disrespectful, dehumanizing, and terrorizing treatment against those in our community experiencing homelessness, and I am thereby asking each and every member of this board to vote against instituting such a ban. Thank you, and I yield the rest of my time. Thank, thank you, Jarrett. And uh, I believe next up is uh, Forrest Gilmore. Yes. Hi, everybody. Am I, it says I can't unmute myself, but am I unmuted or? Y yes, you are unmuted. Yeah. Okay. Um, thanks, everybody. I, I really appreciate uh, the time and the opportunity to speak here. Um, and to uh, just uh, with so many echoing, so many voices, I really want to encourage you to, to vote this down. Um, the, uh, there's so many powerful words that have been spoken, so it's hard to even uh, know what to say because so many things have been said already. Um, but I think it comes down to a couple of things for me. One is uh, prioritizing a uh, basic principle, which is that we fight poverty and not the poor. And um, I believe in this instance, we're actually fighting the poor rather than poverty. And uh, I think we need to think about that and use that as a measure for, for our choices and for, um, for uh, this decision. Is it fighting poverty or is it fighting the poor? And um, really refuse to choose the latter. Um, the other thing I want to say again, you know, echoing the CDC guidance, and this is the CDC guidance that all of us love to quote when we uh, combat certain people around coronavirus, it's the same organization, um, that, to, that in the middle of a global pandemic, uh, we, in a state that now has the worst per capita rate of this disease in the entire country, um, in one of the, uh, uh, in, in the worst recession that any of us have seen in our lifetimes, in the winter, uh, I really think this is a, a bad idea to make this choice now. What concerns me again and again is we come up against these issues and we have these big meetings that discuss these small uh, localized um, flare-ups that, that come and we don't establish a serious plan to addressing homelessness in our community uh, with an emphasis on housing. And that's what we have to do. We have to focus on this and we can't just think about today. We have to think about long-term. And until we meet that long-term goal, we, we uh, need to um, step away from fighting the poor. Thank you. Thank you, Forrest. <clears throat> um, and I believe next up is V. 
Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes. Um, I want to point out the irony of the congratulations on Switchyard Park earlier. This area was previously a homeless encampment and the people there were displaced so the rest of the community could have another park. And yet the city is upset that encampments have been put up in the little space that the homeless population has left. I want to urge that you view people facing homelessness as people. The removal of tents is inhumane and it is especially inhumane during a global pandemic in the winter. I want to remind the city council of Ian Stark, a person facing homelessness in Bloomington who froze to death a few years ago. His death could have been prevented. You deserved so much better, Ian. If tents are removed, this is further blood on your hands. There needs to be adequate housing and resources before this is voted on. And it's clear that Bloomington has these resources by the building of switchyard parks, hotels, and other apartment buildings. I wanna ask each city council member, do you value all people in your community? And does the city government value people over profit and quote unquote appearances? You cannot answer yes to this question and then vote to remove these tents. Everyone who votes to remove these tents, I hope you lose sleep at night in your warm home, knowing that you remove shelter from those in your community. And it's disgusting to me that this is even something being voted on. I yield my time. Thank you, V. Um, and the next speaker, I'm afraid I'm, I'm gonna mispronounce, Alicia, is that right? Hi, yeah, this is actually Alessia, but that's Alessia, close enough. Alessia, sorry, yeah. Yeah, uh, I guess everyone can hear me. Uh, I obviously want to echo the sentiment of what everyone on this call has said so far, that this policy is inhumane. There's no other word for it other than, you know, cruel, unusual, and inhumane, and something I would really like the Parks and Recreation Department to understand is I think that we're we're doing this problem where we're othering homeless people right now. We're acting as though that they are some uh, piece of dirt on our beautiful little town and that they are other and they are not us and they're them. And I want everyone here to remember that we are all a lot closer to being homeless and to not having the ability to house ourselves than we are to being rich and happy for the rest of our lives. All it takes in this country is a uh, too high of a medical bill that you can't pay or student loan debt that you can't pay off because of how high it is. I mean, the list goes on, not even to mention that our federal minimum wage, including the minimum wage here in Indiana is seven twenty five, dollars and that has not been raised in the last 11 years. And so perhaps, just as Forrest mentioned, we should be fighting poverty and not the poor. And that's what this policy is not going to do. This policy is just hurting poor people and homeless people in our town. And that is completely unfair. And as public officials, I urge you to actually take responsibility for your actions and to understand what this will do. Because this is just taking the problem of housing insecurity and putting it on uh, poor people and homeless people instead of actually addressing why people are homeless at such a high rate here in Bloomington and why we have such uh, expensive housing and why people aren't able to house and feed and clothe themselves after working a full-time job. Because that's the case for a lot of people in Bloomington, a lot of people in Indiana, and a lot of people in our country. And I would hope that public official, when you take that job and you decide to represent your community, that you're deciding to do it to actually help people and not to put on a brave face. And honestly, at the end of the day, like everyone mentioned, it's cruel and unusual to take away people's housing in the middle of the pandemic when it's what, like 32 degrees outside. I don't think anyone would be doing this to a friend or to a loved one. If you had a loved one who was homeless. That is time. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Um, and I believe that John is next. John Pritchett. Yes. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, thanks for letting me speak. Um, so I'll try to, I don't have anything prepared. I've heard, I noticed some people seem like they had some stuff written. So I hope this doesn't go into a rant, but um, I, the first time I was homeless, I was four years old, me and my dad in an abandoned house. Next time it was 14. Um, I've been homeless several times. Um, I, I actually grew up here. I graduated from um, 
South High School, but I went to Harmony uh, for a few years, did a graduation project on homelessness, and I've had, uh, I've had the, um, a soft spot for people experiencing homelessness my entire life. Um, the past two years, I worked at the Evansville Rescue Mission, uh, and then I did homeless outreach at Aurora down there, which is kind of like a, a, very, a very similar place to Shalom. Um, I moved back here a few months ago to work at the Indiana Recovery Alliance. I am not representing them right now. I'm representing myself, so I just want to make that clear. Um, I I'm, I was born in Evansville, so I'm allowed to say it. it's it's kind of like a, a little dirt hole of Indiana. I love Bloomington. I love this town. Um, I am I am astonished and completely ashamed at how we treat our homeless. Evansville treats their homeless better than Bloomington does. Um, I went into Switchyard a couple of days ago on my own, not for work or anything, just to talk to some of the people there. There is a woman there who has full-blown AIDS in a tent that can barely get out in the cold. Um, there's another woman who can't walk. I guess she's been waiting on a wheelchair. There are people there where if you do this, they're going to be crawling down the sidewalk out of there. Okay. I personally, on my own time, me and my wife have raised like five, 600 bucks to put the girl that has HIV in a hotel room, and I'm going to try to link her to care. People need to do go do something. Like we can talk about this all day long, but until we actually go and do something, the problems it's not it's not going to go away. The thing the thing the difference between a good homeless outreach case person and and a not a good one is the good ones hold the person's hand all the way until they get housed because there's a reason that they can't get housed. You can't just say self resolve. It doesn't work that way with homeless people. If we do this. I, I, it's going to be very bad. I'm echoing just pretty that, much. Going that is around time. That right. is time. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your comment, John. Um, and I believe next up is Denise. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, hello everyone. It's so great to hear from so many friends that I've made in the community. Uh, you really have a great um, outpouring right now for this um, proposal. I've worked with Paula once before when we had an issue with um, the little uh, free pantries in our Broadview neighborhood as the Broadview neighborhood president. And I know Paula to be reasonable on that issue and I understand a little bit about um, how she has to do her job. That being said, um, the CDC does recommend that we leave tent cities where they are right now. Um, we are in an emergency situation in our country and our city. The parks are public property as a community member, um, homeowner, taxpayer, whatever, um, and uh, somebody that appreciates our parks. When I drive past that seminary square park, my heart's warmed. Uh, my heart's warmed because we haven't kicked people out. My heart's warmed because we are looking for solutions, but we can't kick these people out tonight. We can't kick them out tomorrow. We can't kick them out during the day. They will freeze to death. I'm a native Hoosier. I've been here my whole life, not just in Bloomington, but throughout the state. It's not an isolated problem, but we can set an example like we have been in the state for how we deal with COVID, for how we deal with the pandemic and for how we deal with young people as well. We can be a positive example to the rest of the state of how to care for people that are experiencing homeless. They're not a subgroup of human beings. They're people experiencing homeless and they will be at great risk tonight. And I know Paula and the rest of this board will take that under consideration and make sure- That, that is time. Thank you, Denise, for your comment. And I think next we have Nathan. Yes. Might just. Yeah. Give me this. Thanks. There yeah, we can go. you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so 
my own. Uh, this is the time that I participate in these meetings because this policy is not new. Yeah, Nathan, I'm sorry, we can't, we can only hear just a couple of your words. Is that any better? A little bit, yeah, try again. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I want to say that I am, I'm ashamed that this is the first time I'm speaking and the first time. And uh, it should. Okay, I think we've lost. Nathan, we keep. You lose me? Yeah, sorry. I, I yield my time. It's okay. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. We kept losing your, your voice there. Um, you can, of course, put something in the chat if you want to comment that way. And I, I think Hazel is next. Hi, thank you. Am I audible? Yes. Hi, my name is Hazel Benton. Um, I'm an assistant teacher at the project school here in Bloomington, and I've also lived in Bloomington for 24 years. I'd just like to echo what V said earlier, where I am feeling sick to my stomach over the fact that in four days, it will be December 12th, which will be the seven year anniversary of when Ian Stark, who died of exposure, was found dead in a stairwell here in Bloomington. And he died because he didn't have anywhere to go. But seven years ago, it wasn't also a global pandemic. And I'm bringing this up and reiterating this because this is not theoretical. I think this policy will directly lead to the deaths of people who are a part of our community. And the blood will be on this council's hands if you choose to enact this policy. I, I have personally interacted with people in this community who are unhoused, and it is often a benefit to me at the project school, I have had, I know that there have been students who have experienced homelessness themselves. There are students who have been a part of our community and gone to school here in Bloomington and have had a place permanent to stay. And sorry, I'm getting kind of emotional over this, but. Last winter, I interacted a couple of times with a man in our community named David Ortiz Pino. He sold paintings downtown. I saw one of his art pieces and it's one of the most important things to me that I own. And I don't know where he is right now and I hope he's okay. And I hope that you don't choose, I don't hope that you enact this policy and then accidentally kill him because I'd consider him my friend and a part of this community. I yield the rest of my time. All right, thank you, Hazel. Um, and A Asha, or Asha, I think is next. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can, yeah. Hi, my name is Asha Kutroff. I'm a young professional here in Bloomington. I've lived here for about five years. I echo many here urging you to vote against this new measure. Um, I can't speak as well as many of the people here have today, but my motivations for that, um, asking you to vote no, are the cold weather, the lack of space in both day and night shelters, and the current CDC COVID-19 guidance regarding encampments. Um, I'm also trying to figure out exactly how this group makes information publicly accessible. When I heard about this new, um, statute. I tried to do some Googling and couldn't find any information on the city website or through a simple Google search. I left a voicemail to Paula, which I did not hear a response to. I can understand that you were probably very busy, but I'd like to hit more evidence because right now it seems that there's been inadequate stakeholder assessment. Um, it sounds like the people in the parks themselves were not engaged and they are stakeholders to this initiative. And I also think there's been inadequate risk assessment and that if there was a risk assessment, that was not shared with the community. So I would ask that not only do you vote no to this, but you also reconsider um, your operational procedures 
to make more public your stakeholder assessments and risk assessments. Thank you very much. All right, thank you for your comment. And next up is uh, Quentin. I believe, or no, maybe. You were, you actually unmuted me. My, oh, uh, oh, you, yes. You, yes, you unmuted me. So would you okay. like to? Sure, like go, to go right ahead, yeah. Hello? Oh, there's Quentin there. Okay. I'm so sorry about that. That's okay. It, yeah, go right ahead and then we'll have RM after, after you, Quentin. Uh, I just wanted to say I've lived in Bloomington my entire life. I wanted to second what Eli was saying earlier. This is one of the smallest parks under the city's domain. Uh, this is not only are the people there neglected, this is a park the city has neglected. You claim the homeless people have made the park unsanitary. I'd like to dispute that. You haven't provided the adequate trash facilities for, for them. Uh, this is one of the only public parks without a restroom. Uh, you've installed porta potties at Ferguson Dog Park and Upper Cascades, uh, none in, in um, Seminary Square Park, yet you complain that there's a sanitation problem. Seems like you have the solution for it. Um, as I said, I've lived here my entire life and I've never seen any new shelters or restrooms or trash cans or even really benches at this park. This is one of the least service parks in the entire cir circuit and it always has been. If the city cares so little about this park, then why are they so upset that people are camping there? I think it's utterly ridiculous. Um, you neglect the park and you neglect the people. Thank you and good night. Thank, thank you, Quentin. And yes, RM, I believe is next. Good evening. Thank you for, uh, for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Um, I want to speak from two um, with two hats all at the same time. Um, as a healthcare provider in the city of Bloomington, I, I beg you to, to vote this down and vote no. Everybody has already said about the CDC guidelines. You can't think that you know better than the CDC. You cannot think that. And if you do, then you are egotists. Um, but aside from that, please, please do not stress our healthcare system more than it already is. Today alone, we lost 124 souls in the state of Indiana, two in Monroe County. I do not want to see that happen more. I cry every day because I'm a healthcare provider exhausted daily. Please, please do not do this. <clears throat> that said, I ask you, because I know this is your job to please just for today and for until this this pandemic is behind us, table this until the end of the second round of vaccines, because you're not gonna find these people and they are going to be spreading disease because right now you know where they are. We know where they are. I spoke to each and every one of those homeless people not more than two weeks ago myself. I know their names. Um, every single one was given a mask. They were also had hand sanitizer, and that is more than I've seen from the city thus far. Um, so please, please vote this down. Um, we've got to come up with solutions for the poor in our city. They are our people. They are part of our community and we love them. I'd like to see everybody make eye contact with each and every one of the homeless in our community tonight as you vote this down, maybe close your eyes as you're voting um, and visualize them. Uh, thank you and I yield the rest of my time. All right, thank you. Um, so, okay, um, <clears throat> we have, we're, we're going a bit, longer than we normally do. Um, I would like to just try to get in the remaining comments of people who have their hands up here. Um, and then obviously we have um, a lot of other things on our agenda that I think um, we are going to have a, 
end up having a separate meeting perhaps next week to deal with just the sort of day-to-day of parks business contracts and tree pruning and those sorts of usual things. Um, so if we could, and I thank you for your patience, people are commenting. I think we'll just try to wrap up here and then we'll go to some board member questions and comments on this item. Uh, so next would be Melanie. Melanie Davis. All right, there we go. My daughter and I were houseless in Indianapolis for several months before moving to Bloomington. We moved here 12 years ago, and one of the first actions of the city that we witnessed was the cold early morning destruction of a camp uh, where a habitat, habitat for Humanity neighborhood is now being developed. Um, speaking to a resident who was born in a house across 9th Street from Reverend Butler Park, he said that there had been homeless people living in, that, in those woods uh, there since the Great Depression. This town, like nearly all, has pushed the responsibility for taking care of people off to charities and nonprofits. No, the Parks Department is not responsible for the failure of the city to house people or to even provide affordable housing. But as managers of the largest chunk of public lands in the city, it's your responsibility to not endanger the lives of people in our, on our property, on our property. This isn't about the time of the pandemic or just about the time of the pandemic. This isn't about just winter or Christmas or any of that. This is about our collective responsibility to our fellow citizens. If we do not make a stand to take care of people or at least not further endanger them when they are trying to do what is best for themselves, given their woefully limited options, is shameful and criminal. Let the people stay. I yield my time. All right. Thank you, Melanie. And next is Isabel Piedmont-Smith. Yes, hello. Um, my name is Isabel Piedmont-Smith. I'm a city council representative for District 5 here in Bloomington. And I urge you to vote against this policy change. Um, I know that uh, we at the city council and certainly the mayor, uh, we have a lot of work to do on homelessness. Um, you're the parks board, your, uh, your prerogative is very limited. Um, and so I'm not, uh, you know, here to condemn anybody. Uh, I'm here to recognize that we have a lot of work to do to uh, house more of our community members. Um, but this uh, action, uh, this proposal in front of you tonight is uh, morally wrong. And I urge you to vote against it. Um, we need longer uh, time to, um, to find a safe place for people who are currently uh, spending the night in our parks. Um, and before that safe space is a certainty, we should not be kicking them out. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Isabel. Um, okay, and next is I believe Andrew. Hi there, can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Hi there. Um, so my name's Andrew. I've lived in this town for a few years now. And uh, there's a lot that's already been said, but I, I'd like to add that I think that the purpose behind this policy has been to promote the interests of Bloomington businesses and their profits over the needs of actual human beings and frankly, the most vulnerable people in our community. And I think everyone else has already demonstrated that the justification legally for this rule change is flimsy, cannot stand, and that really this rule change is on its face pretty barbarous. Uh, I think this is a disgusting display of uh, state power. And as someone who's been housing secure, um, I, I really do intend to uh, protest this should uh, this actually pass. And I'd like to add, too, that playing on your phones while homeless people beg for their lives and describing them as taking up space is just some of the most cruel actions I've ever seen in my entire life. And I am beyond disgusted. Please vote against this. And please take the humanity of these people into your hearts. Thank you. I yield my time. Thank you, Andrew. Um, and I believe next up is Rebecca 
Rebecca Godse. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought that I was unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yeah, no, you're fine. We can hear you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm just going to make it quick. Um, I think that a, a lot of us are in unison with uh, the decision that needs to be made for the betterment of definitely permanent housing and the tents um, should not be a home for anyone, um, to be honest. I think any of us in this thread would agree that hopefully we would not wish for anyone to live in a tent. With that said, um, maybe uh, providing a link uh, to formulate a committee of willing people in this thread that would offer uh, solutions because, you know, obviously we want this voted as a no and people to not be kicked out. Um, so, Obviously, what we need is a solution. So if maybe somebody could utilize a group effort to get more people involved, that's definitely what is needed here. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your comment. Um, and next up, I think, is Danielle. Danielle. I hope I'm bird. I hope I'm saying it right. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my name is Donielle Bird, and I'm a social worker. I've lived in Bloomington for over 32 years, and I'm just echoing much of what the other people have said about this, is that I urge you to vote against it. I'm so disappointed that this is being raised at this period of time uh, during a pandemic, uh, going against CDC guidelines, uh, violation of human rights, uh, you know, these are, these houseless citizens are part of our community and they have every right to be in the parks. Uh, and so in addition to um, voting no on this, I encourage you to look at uh, be enabling camping overnight. Um, there are a lot of reasons why people um, don't go to day shelters um, or, or overnight shelters. Uh, right now, you can't socially distance very well. And there's some amazing uh, folks doing things. Uh, Shalom, uh, Beacon, Housing for Homeless, Monroe County Mutual Aid. These folks are tapped out. Uh, when you go into Shalom, it is this very tiny space. Uh, they need a bigger building to be able to do more of their good work, but, but that's not a place for everybody during the day. So right now you've got people in tents in, in parks, right? So um, also we need restroom facilities. This has been going on for years. We've been asking for more public restroom facilities. What do you expect um, when we don't have enough places for restrooms and, and trash? So it's going to create an issue. I wanna remind you all, uh, or maybe everybody listening, that in 2013, the city of Bloomington paid a consulting firm to have a charrette process. And the goal was to end homelessness by, I think it was 2020. Um, and you know there were a lot of things discussed during that um, charrette and different innovative ideas. And we had showcased other communities and what they're doing. And I don't feel like that's really gone anywhere other than the fact that um, Shalom and has, has done so much more. Um, and I commend them for that. And then you've got Katie Norris and, and the housing for the homeless. So, you know, our community needs to come together. This is not a time to kick everybody. And out of that is, that is time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, just to, uh, clarify here. Okay. And again, thank you for waiting patiently. We have seven more, uh, I, six or seven more speakers here that we'll do. And then Ellen has um, also a written comment from the gentleman who whose phone wasn't connecting or we weren't connecting with him. So we will take those comments and then we will uh, go again over to board member questions and comments. So next is Jennifer Crossley. Okay, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Jennifer Crossley. Um, I'm a mom, a wife, and a community member. And most importantly, I'm a person that has empathy. And it appears that 
our very own community has a lack of empathy. Right now, it is cold, and I echo the sentiments of a lot of folks that are on this call, um, and I say that this definitely needs to be voted down. I drove past uh, the park uh, next to rallies the other day with my three kids in my car and had to explain to them that these folks have nowhere else to go, and this is where they have. And if my eight-year-old, my six-year-old, and my 13-year-old can have a sense and a slice of empathy, then I want adults to have the same empathy as well. We have abandoned buildings, or excuse me, not abandoned buildings, but we also have very vacant buildings and our very young progressive community. Let's say that we're progressive, let's help out our most vulnerable in our community because they deserve respect. I yield my time. All right, thank you, thank you, Jennifer. And next up is Martin Law. Oops. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, so, you know, I, th I think it's become pretty clear from all the comments here that um, this updating of, you know, the special use policy is is not popular and it makes no sense. And I, I can't imagine at this point that the uh, Parks Commission is going to approve it. So I, I think we really actually need to be thinking about what the next step for the Parks Commission is. Um, you know, under the special use policy that's being, uh, that, where the update is being discussed, um, it says that the Parks Commission can actually approve uh, uses of the park that lie outside of normal uh, um, operation. And so one of the things the Park Commission could do would actually be to explicitly allow camping in the park, uh, in all city parks, right? You could do that today. Well, maybe you'd have to, you'd have to make a, a, another meeting for that, but that's okay. Again, I think we're at a point where, that, where it's clear to everybody on this call, right, that there's no way it makes sense to ban tents in any city parks. It's absurd. So I think it's time to think about the next step. And that next step is explicitly allowing tents in our parks, uh, maybe only temporarily, maybe only until we come up with uh, you know, um, some other resources. But certainly right now, there's no doubt that what the city needs to do is explicitly allow camping, not, not just uh, uh, vote down this proposed ban that again, nobody approves of, right? Uh, but instead we need to move forward and explicitly allow camping in our parks. That is the best way for the city to, uh, you know, or, or for, I'm sorry, for the Parks uh, Commission to enact the uh, values that they uh, claim to have and the values I think Bloomingtonians would embrace. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Um, and then we have, is it Kirsten White? Um, let me see. Yes. Hello. Um, so I want to share, uh, I'm the program director of the Monroe County Isolation Shelter, and it's an uh, isolation shelter for people who have been exposed to COVID or have COVID and need to isolate or quarantine. I want to share a quote that I've heard circulated around several of our guests. I'm scared to go to a shelter around others because I have pre-existing conditions. Um, it's a shared reality, and I want to specifically touch on the, the day use for tents. Um, tents really do add a layer of warmth, and when coupled with warm, warm gear, it makes a huge difference. Removing that protection will not change um, the fact that, that people are stuck outside in the cold. It will, however, threaten their safety. Um, and I think that there, our worlds have all been really shaken this year, but I really think there's opportunity to build a new normal here and create local policy designed to end homelessness and not manage it. Um, the reality that people would choose to live in a tent instead of a shelter is a decision that I believe should be met with compassion and action, not only in speech, rather than discussed by moving forward with new solutions, such as offering public housing, or sorry, public restrooms um, and collaborating with the unhoused to stand in solidarity with our unhoused neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, and so we have um, Mace is next, and then we'll have Molly, the Mutchler family, Aaron Mordeaux, and Ryan B. So next, uh, Mace.
I just need a minute. Here to we go. go. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Hello. Yes. I just uh, communicate that you know I, I see what you're doing, but you're not going to the root of the problem. The root of the problem is, I mean, at least in my situation, is center. Uh, Center Stone really screwed up with me. I have severe mental illness. And this is why I'm because of Center Stone. And I mean, really need to look at the issues of why people are homeless. Uh, you're not doing it. Uh, a lot of people just want to assume drug addict, or uh, people want to say they had a, a bad upbringing, or don't know what right and wrong is. There's other meaning issues, and people don't want to hear my issue. They, they really don't. Uh, I love how Centerstone just comes up with excuse after excuse when I accuse them or whatever. And due to the, uh, the COVID, there's no recording you know, agency or anything, so I'm, I'm left in the dust. But that's all I really Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mace. Um, and then we have Molly... Stuart. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to read some statements from a, a person who is experiencing homeless who would like to remain anonymous. Okay. Um, so this is uh, from a few hours ago. Um, she said, I'm about ready to back out to my tent to have some peace of mind I'm stressed out enough. I don't need anyone pushing my buttons. I went to the doctor today. My blood pressure was high. I'm sorry, this is from a couple of days ago. A week ago, my heart stopped. They got me back. Um, I'm at the shelter now. I was a runaway at the age of 16. That was also my first rape. Oh, sorry. Um, I have to go to work tomorrow or I would go to jail for my rights. We the homeless people have rights. We have a right to live in Bloomington, Indiana. What can I do to help us homeless people out? We need help. Um, I'll be out of quarantine at the end of the month. I'm afraid to go back to the shelter, but I have to go. I'm going to the shelter tonight and I'm so scared. That was a few days later. Um, I have some stuff to give you for the homeless. <sighs> Um, do you know how to get a hold of another person? I have two walkers to give away to the homeless collectors, but someone needs to come and pick them up. Um, I just want to know when that women's shelter or wheeler is going to open. I would be better off in the new women's shelter. Please try to find out for me, please. I'm not safe or feeling all right. I'm very scared every day. Um, if I have a, a little more time, this is me speaking for myself. Um, I just want to highlight a few things here to the people who've been commenting in the chat that um, that somehow people are not doing enough when they find themselves homeless. And I, I just want to say that as someone who tries to help out when I can, I see so much generosity within this community. Um, the homeless community or the community of people who are not currently having homes. Um, you know, it's sharing what you have to make sure your friends stay alive. And I see a lot of people with resources doing that, but I see a lot of people, citizens, voters, taxpayers in this town really not caring about anything except themselves and whether their property value is going up and whether they, you know, have parking for four cars for two people. Um, I'd like people to keep this in mind when we vote on the new UDO uh, for the new um, planning cycle for the city. We need to have diverse types of housing in this town. Even people who are working two jobs cannot afford a place to live in this town because we have so many people who are so concerned about making more money than they already have. That, and that is time. Okay, thank you for your comment. Um, and the Much Muchler family, Muchler family. 
Yes, thank you. Um, I'm echoing some of the previous comments one lady made about her children. Um, my daughter wanted to read a letter um, to the council. I, we take our kids to play at the park and um, switchyard and all the others. And I've taken them to feed the homeless at seminary. And um, my daughter, she thinks it's wrong to have enough money for home. And my mother taking care of her, I don't know what would have happened to her or to me for that matter. And to read these comments that are so villainously cruel about people. Um, I think it would be a much better use of everyone's time if we figure out how to make Seminary Park a place where people can stay until we're out of the winter. It is just utterly villainous that people would even bring this up right now. Thank you, I yield the rest of my time. All right, Th yes, thank you for your comment. And and Aaron Mordeaux, I believe is next. Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, apologize, I'm just coming back from the clinic. Um, I would just like to say that I really do appreciate the Parks Department going in, offering health services, working with us, different organizations. I think that's wonderful. I think it's building trust. And I, I just hope that you will consider that this kind of vote could erode some of the trust. Um, so just, you know, unintended consequence there. And that just, um, I hope that in the future we'll do more activities to build trust with this very vulnerable community. Um, so I just wanted to offer that perspective and thank you very much for everyone and their considerations tonight. I yield the rest of my time. All right, thank you. Thank you, Aaron. And then I think we have Ryan B and then um, possibly Vox has said, Vox Booker has said in the comments as well. But so we have Ryan next. Yes, thank you. Um, and thank you to the council for, for hearing us out here. Um, you know we wanted to send off Mr. Coyne with an anything but typical um, parks and rec meeting. Um, <coughs> you know, I, when I saw this, I was also, uh, when I saw the notice for this, I was also, um, you know, I was, I was, I was appalled, uh, truthfully. Um, honestly, I, what you're witnessing uh, in, in Seminary Park is a humanitarian crisis. Uh, and it is one that is happening nationwide. Um, you know, sweeping it under the rug so we can't see it anymore is not going to help anyone. And any attempt at hiding it is only going to make it worse. I understand that typically, you know, these decisions might not be in the Parks and Rec Department's purview. And certainly you're not the ones that can by any means solve homelessness. But I know a lot of these people and this is not the way uh, to do it. Um, they, they, more than ever, there are people in need. Um, and the last thing we need to do is to uh, take away the only things that they have, um, you know, things that they've had taken away over and over again. We don't need to take their dignity again. Um, I use the parks all the time. We have many of them. We have many open green spaces. I, I don't have the answer to this, but I, I certainly don't think that, that taking away um, that option for them uh, is the right move. Um, thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Um, and I know that, yes, Ellen, you had some comments to share. Yeah. Um, sure. So I'll just read Nathan's comment. He sent it to me. Um, he just says, thank you. I'm shamed that this is the first time that I've taken the few moments to support our unhoused brothers and sisters and give solidarity against this policy. I should have been here months, if not years ago. Please imagine waking one morning and over a warm cup of coffee, opening HuffPost to read a headline, many frozen overnight in Bloomington cold snap. Imagine the shame we would feel as a community and a city. Know now that you can take a step as a commission to choose another path by listening to this community. And then I have a few people who had, um, private message to me who did not find the raise hand function. So I believe first was Rick's iPhone. Okay. And we still have Rick. 
Rick's iPhone there. Let me look and see. Uh, Hello. Uh, it's yes, I, I found him in. Oh, sorry. I found him in unmuted or oh, found her. Okay. Excuse me. Ricky Schmeeken is my name. And um, I would like you to vote this down, please. Um, it's <clears throat> this uh, time of year, Ian Tyler Stark died at 24 um seven years ago and uh if that doesn't bother you you need to ask yourself why you're working for the city um if it's too trashy you need to maybe institute some kind of uh cash for trash program like little rock arkansas or san jose does they pay people up to 9 25 an hour to pick up trash and it's cash in hand. Um, some people are otherly abled that we've actually heard at the beginning of this meeting. And it's uh, very f hard for those people to file um, for housing and jobs or get any help. Do not hide these people away from our site. Um, minimum wage has not changed here and housing has gone up astronomically um if they are unseen you know they can't get clothes how can they get gloves or food do not be force people back into backyards and hide them that is a bigger problem for neighbors allow camping in parks this is not the job of the BPD or IUPD. They should not be put in harm's way or put homeless at risk. They don't even give citations to people with bad license plates or lights out right now. They don't need to be doing this. This is, should not be on their agenda. Um, the Parks Department's job is to erect parks and things like uh, bathrooms and shelter houses and grills for people to use all people everybody ian stark was like he is our brother these are our brothers and sisters and we should never forget that and um please follow the cdc recommendations it is the the bloomington is a place of science we all People in Bloomington are known for being smart and using science and, the, and our city parks and rec department should stick by the CDC recommendations and should not uh, take these people's tents. Remember Ian Stark. He was a young man who lost his life and maybe a tent could have saved his life. I yield my time. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And then uh, um, I yes. had uh, Kathleen Boja, so I'm just gonna go ahead. I found her to ask to unmute. Okay. And, yep, there we go. Okay, this is Daryl using Kathleen's phone. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm a retired engineer who's made a living for several decades finding solutions to problems. I see the solution here is for the board to approve a motion to table this action and spend their time this evening to discuss how to approve a waiver to allow these people to continue living in a park where I went around the post office this week and noticed up close the tents, the appearance, the condition. My first and lasting impression personally was positive. I think this is good because it's visible. Seminary Park is a tiny footprint in the square miles of parks in our community. I have very few tabs. Personally, any of my family spent time in that park because it's between two busy streets. Right now, that's a plus. It sends a message to anybody on either street of how we choose to treat these people. They need to have trash collection. 
They need to have porta potties. They need to stay where they are until they have another place to go. I yield my time. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes, Ellen. Yep, just a couple more. Um, Beverly Calendar Anderson, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Perfect. Hi, thank you. I'm Beverly Calendar Anderson, and I am the director of the Community and Family Resources Department for the city. And um, in my capacity as the CFRD director, I have the, the wonderful opportunity actually to work with many of our nonprofits in the community, as well as a lot of individuals. And one, I wanted to say that I am um, really uh, moved by the compassion that I'm hearing for our neighbors who are experiencing homelessness and, and are in the park moved by all of the individuals as much as I am on a daily basis by all of the agencies that I work with. Um, Kirsten was on with the isolation shelter in Forest um, with Beacon and um, also with, um, I know that Greg was on with Centerstone and I, I have the opportunity to work with them. And I want to uh, sort of um, reiterate one of the things that um, I think it was Ryan said earlier that uh, parks can't solve homelessness. And I realized that this is a meeting about the um, change in the policy. But as so many of you have said, this is a much, much deeper issue. And, um, and it really goes outside of, of what parks um, jurisdiction is. And, and so I would really want to say, you know, that we need to come together, and I think Forrest said it as well, as a community and, and figure out how do we solve the underlying issues so that people won't need to be in the park. The, I, I was doing some quick calculation and just this year, the city has invested about a half a million dollars into our uh, agencies, whether that's the isolation shelter or Beacon or Wheeler or Centerstone or, or wherever it is. I mean, and I know that United Way and other agencies have done the same. And so I know that there are a lot of compassionate people and a lot of caring agencies, including the staff in, um, in, in at, at the city. And so I think this is a, it's a community issue. And I hear, I hear everybody saying, we, 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 and, and I do think it's a, we, and I would, I would um, really encourage us, not just the city, but the city and our subject matter experts, you know, who are those people that are working with the, with homeless uh, residents, um, to, to come together the, to figure out larger solutions because I'd, certainly it's not ideal for anyone to be living in the park in a tent. Um, but you know there are, we, we have made investments so that there are other places that people can, can go that can shelter. Um, I know that that Shalom works, you know, with uh, or Beacon. I'm sorry, with rapid housing and and so I would just encourage us all to come together and um, you know I know the Parks Board will do what the Parks Board will do, but again, it's not only a Parks issue. It's it's a much much larger issue that that I hope that we can come together as a community to resolve. And that was all I wanted to say. Thank okay. you. And yes. then I just have two more. Uh, Sing, I'll ask you to unmute, and then Vox will okay. follow. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi there. Thank you for giving me the time to speak. Uh, Bloomington is a huge proponent of the arts, but what about the art of compassion? I simply ask you to please exercise your power to act with kindness, because there's far too little of it left in the world right now. Please choose compassion and vote down this proposal. Thank you for your time. I yield my time. Thank you. And Vox, I think you'll be our final speaker this evening. Hello, commissioners. I first would like to say that I appreciate you for providing this forum for the community to voice their opinions on this very important issue. Uh, secondly, and most importantly, I would like to speak to my community for the tremendous pride that it inspires in me to hear you all speak so eloquently and, and poignant uh, about the compassion that you have for your neighbors. Uh, 
I would like for, uh, you know, rather than us have a safe and civil community uh, that Beverly leads, I'd like for us to be a compassionate and progressive community. Uh, we give a lot of lip service to uh, being liberals, to being the blue dot in, in the Red Sea, uh, but we don't often live up to those uh, principles. Um, if I would have just told the beginning of this meeting, Paula eloquently spoke about uh, the county or the resources available in our community. Uh, if you hadn't heard people like uh, Forrest Gilmore or uh, Catherine Norris speak out who are actually leaders in our community who deal with homelessness on a day-to-day -day basis, speak against that notion, uh, you would have walked away with the sense that our community had the best interest for everyone and that uh, the people living in this park were well taken care of. Uh, but however, that seems untrue. I'm fortunate enough to uh, wear several hats in this community. I've spent uh, off and on a decade working with folks dealing with uh, homelessness. Uh, I chair the county's affordable housing commission. I'm intimately acquainted with the issues of housing. Um, so I know those things aren't actually true. We don't have a solution that can, can just magically uh, put everyone in this park in a safe spot. Uh, I think it's been an unfortunate burden placed upon your body to make this decision. I think it's something that the, the council or the mayor's administration should be making. Uh, so I'm going to, to urge you to act with compassion, uh, to say, hey, you know what, we're not experts. We hold the experts speak and they urged us not to do this. We hold the CDC's guidelines and they say not to do this. So at least in the time until this uh, pandemic passes, we're not going to act on this. Uh, that is time. Right. I would urge you all to think about your legacy, especially you, Les. Right. Thank, thank you, Vox. Um, so I'm going to suggest we are two and a half hours um, in, and I appreciate all of the comments from the public. Um, so I, for one, have taken about two or three pages of notes in all of this. Um, I don't feel prepared to put this up to a vote because I feel like the other board members and I just have a lot of other questions and things that have been raised this evening. Um, please weigh in, Ellen and Israel, and Les, if you disagree, but I would like to to table a vote on this until we can get some more information. I just have so many, uh, I think, questions and other points of discussion that we just can't get to this evening. So other board members, how how do you feel about a motion to table this for this evening? Well, I'll just, um, I agree, Kathleen, I've got a lot of notes here um, and uh, also feel, uh, I would say, ill-prepared. Um, um, I, um, I guess I do have one question. Um, I was curious about um, whether, why the motion came onto the table tonight, um, why it was on our why it was brought up for this particular meeting. I think that Paul, Paul is probably the best person to answer that question. Sure, thank you. And thank you everyone for your comments tonight. Um, we manage and operate the Parks Department through our policies. And whenever an issue arises or we get questions, the first place we turn is to our policy manual. That's what what guides our decisions and how we operate from facility management to programs to everything that we do in the parks department. So um, we had received enough U reports and phone calls and concerns about the situation uh, at several of our parks, in addition to the amount of trash that we were carrying out of our parks, um, the impact uh, that that was having on the operations um, and we turn to our policy manual. And oftentimes I was asked in the past couple of months, you know, what is the policy about tents in parks? And what we had in place was a special use permit that without it, you couldn't be there overnight. So that's how we managed through 
most of the summer and fall and up until now, I mean, that's still in place that, you know, from 11 o'clock till 5 a.m., um, camping in, and inhabiting structures is not allowed. Um, and so that is why this came forward now. Um, and this is the procedure that we follow and bring it to the board with our reasons and um, who we've talked to and what the plan is. And um, as you know, you've, you've approved several policy updates and changes in the past couple of months. It's, a, it's a, a living document that as situations and issues present themselves, that's the place we go first. Okay, okay. I'm ready to vote uh, and, and I respect um, the, the, your proposal and, 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 and asking us how we feel, but uh, um, I believe uh, in my personal, personal position, I, I have heard the comments from, from uh, some of the, the citizens and, and, and I, I am confident that I, I don't need an extra uh, uh, meeting or for the next meeting because I believe this is an emergency and as many um, people in the audience, this needs um, a urgency because we are a, in the middle of a pandemic and also because the in the middle of the winter time and, and this needs you know to be taken care of as as soon as as, uh, as possible because they will be um, in their tents tonight with the and with the call and, and everything so uh, if you ask me uh, I'm ready to vote today but I respect Ellen's and, and your a position and also uh, less. Okay. All right. So, well, the other sort of awkward position that we are in, of course, if we were to move this um, to, you know, next week or next month is that we don't have a board member to replace less yet. Um, so in that case, I think um, I'm going to go ahead and, and call for the vote um, this evening while we have a full a full board. Um, I, I want to say before we vote that I am aware of the frustrations of the Parks Department and I appreciate the people who have commented that it's not really, it's not in the Parks Department, it's not in the employees training, it's not specifically in their job. Um, I, I hope and I think that they've tried to do the best that they can, but it really is a, you know, helping people who are unhoused is a community issue. Um, it's not, it's not, you know, really shouldn't just be something that is put up to the Parks Department. And I, I share the frustration, I think, that Paula has that this is, that we need bigger forces here to, to work on this issue. And I know some of those things are out there and a lot of those things are already being discussed. And I think that's great. Um, there were some initiatives out of the mayor's office today to have more conversations going forward about how we can really try to make a difference on this. So, um, do we have any other Ellen or Israel or sorry Ellen or Les? Do you want to do you want to say uh, any other comments before I'm going to call for a vote? Last you're muted. Do you need a motion, Kathleen? Um, Unless I don't, in just a second, unless Les has a comment to make, I don't know if he does. No, he doesn't. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, Israel, do you want to make a motion then? Yeah, I, I make the motion to vote. Okay. I'll All right. The motion. Okay. Uh, now, I'm afraid now Les might be speaking and he's muted. No. I can't tell. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have um, a motion to vote. Um, so all those in favor of the special use policy 13040 update, please say aye. Okay. I think less is a yes on that. And if you are opposed, please say no. 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 Okay. Uh, so the special use policy 
update um, is not adopted for this evening. I think we look forward to having a lot more conversations about this and bringing in other city, city entities as we can. Um, thank you to everyone who spoke this evening, who took the time and waited to make your comments. Um, I really appreciate that. And also the people who emailed or texted me in advance of the meeting. It's heartening to see oh, so many people care about Bloomington. So I, I really do appreciate that. Um, we will, to respect people's time here, we are, um, we'll call another meeting at some point very soon in the future to deal with the other items that were on our agenda for this evening. Because we also have the, the master plan and we have a lot of other things that we need to take a look at. Um, but I'm afraid, Paula, if you're there, I'm afraid I- Yeah, I, that, that I, was- uh... I have another Zoom at seven. I've, and I've, I understand that. And thank okay. you. Thank you, everyone, for participating and having this conversation. And that is the takeaway. I think uh, the conversation is on the table. And it's been the opportunity for the Parks Department to express the challenges that we're facing. And if that's been the outcome, then um, we will move forward as a community with our partners and our community members to address this, this difficult issue. So thank you everyone for that. Um, I have been in communication with our staff that were um, on uh, the call that have uh, agenda items. Um, Kim will be reaching out to all your board members to um, hopefully get an hour of your time next week. Um, there are agenda items that need to be passed yet this year um, to end out the year. In addition to, we want to get the draft master plan um, out to you. And I will talk to Jonathan Gills from Troyer Group, who has been on this call the whole time, um, to, to at least send that to you in your email so you can start to, to review that. But I really want to give him the opportunity to present um, the draft plan. So if you'll just watch your emails, and Kim will be reaching out to get us all together. One more meeting, Les. Sorry, we're going to get you for one more, but it's uh, really critical. We have some um, approvals that need to be done yet this year so we can um, get some invoices paid and uh, close out the year. So that's a plan that works for everybody. Yes, we'll, we'll make it work. And someone asked the question, we'll, we'll of course be um, clear that the, the next meeting is being announced. Um, Kim always does a good job of getting that out to people the, the week before. Right, and that's on 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 board. Kim, you can clarify because I know that came up tonight. Someone didn't know where to find the packet and the information, but all of city board commissions and meetings are put out on the website. Do you want to tell them specifically where, Kim? Yes, if, if you go into the city website and you go to government and then you go down to boards and commissions, there is a calendar there and all of our meetings are listed on that calendar. So once I do get a meeting scheduled, I will go in and add it to that calendar. The Zoom link is on those calendars also. So you will be able to get through right through that calendar to the meeting. Okay, thank you very much, Kim. All right. And, um, thank you again to all who, who commented um, and we will adjourn our uh, December meeting of the Bloomington Board of Park Commissioners. Thank you.